Thank you all for coming. It is 6 p.m. November 28th, 2023, Village of Waterville regular scheduled uh, council meeting. And call it to order Jessica Gooch. Sheldon? Here. Sheldon? Here. Sandville? Here. Walmart? Here. Pitchcock? Here. You got one? Order. Okay. Stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For approval agenda, I want to put up item number eight, the sweeper. Um, we have a person that's going to buy our sweeper from us, so I just want to invite you guys. So, with that said, we'll put the sweeper at number eight to approve the agenda with the uh, section of number eight. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I would like to add um, number nine. Hold on, we gotta we gotta do this sequentially, so we gotta okay. I second this the motion. Eight, and then we'll move on to later. Okay. Yep. So, so you seconded the number eight. I did. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that one's done. Okay, now you have a number nine. Yes. Lana. Um, the president pro tem. It does say Sam. It was for a year, That's right. That's and it year. says on November twentieth, or as soon as after, mm -hmm. that we do have to have another vote to okay. decide who the president pro tem. Good be. memory. Forgot right. about that. Thank okay. You. So then we'll have the council pick another VP, right? That's what you want down for number nine. Well, I just a we have to go with the yeah the guidelines and the rules. Sure. And, okay. Thanks for up on that. All right, so pro temp number nine, choose for one more year. And who, I'll second. Second by Sandra. All in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Yes. Mr. Scott, will that work? That works, yes, sir. Yep, I appreciate that. Okay, now we have the two items on there. Everybody knows the approved agenda as presented with the applications. Okay, any public comment other than what we got going on today? Yes, sir. Just to reiterate, I never really got a good answer as to why the website is not up to date with agendas and minutes. Okay. Um, I was told the reason why the agendas aren't on it is because they weren't given to him in a timely fashion. I was told he got those this afternoon. I give them to them. They end up not getting, I keep getting people sending me stuff the last minute too. So really I get to them like what, the next like Monday, yeah. sometimes Tuesday morning if there's an update. Yeah, I mean sometimes I mean, it just, it, it all depends. I mean usually they, they come in but a lot of times when things change or um, Scott's looking them up right now. And, to see because I, I don't know if OMA actually Open Meetings Act requires posting of agenda um, because the agenda technically is, as Scott said, is technically fluid until you guys vote to approve that agenda. So the agenda always approved changes. So I mean, just not saying we don't, we don't try to put it out there when we can, but obviously when it keeps changing, that becomes problematic too because we don't want them to put an agenda out on, say, Monday and then all of a sudden it changes four more times and then we're putting a bunch of different versions out there it's kind of confusing okay but we have we would have an original agenda posted whether we've added or subtracted from it right at least the public would have some idea yeah which that's fine but i, I mean from i mean like i said i'll do whatever you guys instruct but i think if you do that then you create another confusion because then people are going to be like, well, why was this taken off the agenda? And, or they show up because they got, you know, they went on Facebook or went on the website at this time and then three days later it was off and they show up to the meeting because their agenda item was on there and then they want to talk about it and then that's no longer on there. Okay, so but I what if you do have the public comment? Well, that's Scott Gould is looking it up, right? Yes, sir. You trying to figure out, let's go, we're going to, we're gonna let this get solved throughout our meeting, okay? We're gonna get pushing the buttons here. 
Consent agenda. Minutes of the council meeting, accounts payable, revenue expenditure report, and the balance sheet. Everybody get a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. Everybody <coughs> make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Tilty? Yes. Homer? Yes. Stanfield? Yes. Walter? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, police report. Captain. Is that yeah. Andy Benzer? Uh, Andy Benzer. I'm the captain of the sheriff's office. Thank you for coming, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, just the last couple of things going on. Um, so, the sheriff's office was the one, was the party that asked to go from 80 hours down to 40 hours. That was us asking because of, like anyone else around the country, we're having a hard time staffing. We had 12 retirements within the last year. Um, we are in a better place now. We're doing doing better than most agencies. And we approached the, the village after some current concerns because of the lack of staffing. Just having a deputy here four days a week for 10 hours wasn't very much. We approached them offering to add that position back. Uh, we do have a deputy, Deputy Rashawn Allen, that's uh, planning on starting um, January 1st upon you guys' approval for that second position. Uh, Rashawn comes to us, you guys, will, you guys will love him, he comes to us from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He came up here to go to law school, he's currently going, going to Cooley Law School. Um, he was an officer down there for several years. He was a Division One NCAA football player. I think the kids in the school and stuff are really going really to like to him. Well-spoken, smart guy. Um, he's excited to do some community policing up here with Chris Hagerman. Um, I know there's been a lot of concerns um, over hours and that kind of thing. I think some of that will smooth out with having two deputies as far as seeing up, us up here on a daily basis. There should be very few days when you don't have a deputy up here. The plan is to keep Chris on days. He'll be mostly involved with schools, but then have Rashawn work opposite uh, uh, opposite schedule from him. He'll be an evening type type uh, deputy. Um, they'll share weekends, so you'll see Chris two or three days during the week, and sometimes you'll see him uh, on the weekends, and then. If uh, so once one or the other will be here on the weekends, um, Rashawn will still be helping out with the schools. Chris is going to focus on schools, but Rashawn too, we expect him to be in the schools. It'll be afternoon type thing and attending some of the events, that kind of thing, and doing the, the community policing thing. Um, I know I had a handful of questions that were sent to me that, that came up. Um, in accounting for Chris Hagerman's hours, um, we do provide a report that doesn't re doesn't record every single minute of every shift that he works. What I think we could do to make this easier is to I could send Jessica a schedule ahead of time so that every 28 days when we have a schedule, I send you the schedule and I can explain to you how the schedule reads. So you can see who's working which day and, and kind of what hours they are. Like I said, Chris will be <clears throat> generally more of like a seven to five, eight to six day shift guy. Rashawn's probably going to work like a mid or a noon to 10 ish, but maybe a little bit later or earlier, depending. Um, another question that came up um, when Hagerman's, when our guys are on vacation, sick time, that kind of thing, does somebody fill in? Uh, the answer is no, that vacation and sick time and that kind of thing is, is figured, figured into the 80 hours, but when they, that's the, the rare occasion when someone is when they're both off or something, there's going to be a rare occasion where you may not have a cop on, but most days, given they're on 10 hour shifts, you're going to have somebody every single day. But I think if you guys had your own agency, you'd have to provide sick time, you'd have to provide time off, vacation time. Training factors into that too, we, we do train quite a bit, but it's not, we try not to overdo it, but there's certainly, we do crisis intervention training, and we do um, annual trainings in service, defensive tactics, um, first aid, CPR, firearms, there's a lot of stuff that we keep our folks up on that to push more and more these days is that, that we've got to do the training to, to provide you guys with the what great quality deputies up here. Um, it was asked if overtime and that kind of stuff is, if you guys are responsible for paying that, no, that's figured into the any overtime, additional staff and stuff that comes from our detective bureau. All that stuff is covered in the contract. You don't get billed additional for that. I did have our detective sergeant grab the wingy pull 
what our detectives had worked on over the last two years, and they came up with about 210 hours that the detective bureau gave um, worked for the village based on some criminal sexual conduct, some child abuses, and embezzlement. Uh, we have cases that sometimes they work 50 or 80 hours on, and there's no additional bill for that. That's included in the contract. Um, our officers that work in the out county, we have three to four per shift that work days or nights, you know, 24/7. Those guys are stepping up, or those guys, those guys are passing through up there, and they have been. Um, they're going to continue to do that. I think, if anything, we generally will see that in a report for additional hours. That's probably underestimated because our guys, there, and I'm trying to get after them about being more specific about documenting the, the time they're, that they're up here so you guys, you guys can see that. But overall, I think we provide a decent quality service for you guys, and that's we want to provide excellent service to, to the village. We really do, so it's important to us. Um, stu students were a main concern, like I said, if that's going to continue. Um, I think they'll see probably more of us and more of us in like the afternoon football games, basketball games. Having our child stop in their community events, we'll have more of that. Um, seven days a week coverage, pretty much every day. There's going to be an occurrence here or there where we we have a day where you guys don't have somebody on. Um, we'll certainly respond to any priorities or any calls. We're not going to let a call stack. One of our elk county deputies will come up and respond to that call. And then again, I think I covered this. If Chris is a dedicated school liaison officer, officer, he'll be the primary guy, but Rashawn will be helping out. And like I said, I think you kids are going to really like Rashawn and like seeing him in the school. So that's where I'm at with things, but I'm open for questions. I just want to make sure you guys know, which I know I've talked to Scott Wigglesworth on it too. Sure. Whenever these things happen, make sure it doesn't happen during, we want the full police enforcement while the kids are in school and school's happening. So while school's in session, make sure that if it's, it's something just for regular work out here to do the town, that's fine, but I want to make sure that the town, the, the school is protected while you guys are here, the 80 hours a week, while school's in works or going to school or leaving out of school, that's our main priority, why we go back to 80 hours, among other things, but that's our main, I think all the people here at the council want to make sure our school's safe like you guys have been doing, but awesome, the kids like like uh, our other our deputy we have now, just everybody's doing great that way. But I just want to make sure that I make that clear that we don't want to miss anybody saying they had the day off that was during the school day. Okay, so you want you want your school hours Monday through Friday covered 100%. Well, how have we been doing that? That's one of our top priorities. So if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna slide somewhere, slide somewhere else, but try to keep the yeah. main priority with the school. That's, that's um, all I'm saying. My concern, like I said, with having the two deputies and want, wanting to keep somebody kind of more in the evenings is making sure that the, for some life work-life balance type thing, that they each get a couple weekends off, which would make my day shift guy pick up a couple weekends, which may leave a couple shifts a month, at most like four, where there isn't somebody on, but there would certainly be somebody in here by like noon, noon or so to check on the school. So. Yeah, just School is my biggest thing. I, you know, yeah. Everybody thinks it can't happen to them, but it's. I just I want to do whatever I can with the 80 hours that we got to make sure that if anybody has any second thoughts, top priority is our school. Okay. Everything else can come second. Yeah, well, that'll be clear to us for sure. Yeah. And then you guys have done an excellent job, and I like you guys. The school has been very happy with the collaboration, the dog going in there, and it's just been happy. Just want to continue with that. Very good. We'll make that up. Make that a priority. And if you guys go in there and you think there's something that they're missing that they're not getting on to, then we need to collaborate with that too because we want to make sure. I went up there and I talked to the um, principal and the superintendent, and they seem like they're staying on top of things to keep everybody protected. But mm -hmm. that's, that's my main thing. I appreciate it. Thank you for that information. Do you have any more information, anybody? You said there will be seven day a week coverage? Yes. There'll be hours of seven days. There'll, there'll be an occasional day because of training, because of vacation or a sick day or something. There'll be occasional days where no one no one is here. It'll be it'll be pretty rare. And then when that happens, there's three guys in route that are just floating around. Yeah, we have all kind of cards. If you if there's a call for service, we're not gonna hold a call for service. We're gonna respond to take your call. 
I definitely. You were at, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I definitely like the idea of them being at the games at night because mm -hmm. I think that is very important because we all know things happen at games, not all the time, but having the presence of an officer, I think, is really important for not only the kids to see but also the parents to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's certainly a deterrent to problems, and it's, for us, it's a relationship building type thing for our, our deputies. So. so, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. We keep the bicycle tuned up for you guys, and uh, <laughs> if there's anything else, let us know. It. Yeah, I know Matt Wilson loved riding that thing. He, yeah. he still misses it. He still talks about this the village all the time. He loved it. He loved texts it here, me about it every three yeah. four weeks. But yeah, so anything that you need from the council, then we appreciate the 80 hours coming back. Thank you. Okay. So when you get the contract drawn up, we don't have that down pat yet, do we? The contract complete? I think we're almost done with it, though. Okay. It should be said. It's been through. It's been through the county commissioners, I believe. So. Okay. I'll get with the under sheriff. They'll make sure we're square to win it tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Right. And you go your bike. Yep. But you don't have to have a card yet. Oh, I do. Yep, yeah, have cards. And I'm going to plan on trying to make these meetings maybe a couple times a year or something. I know Chris said something, but just. To you know, put a face with the sheriff's office. I'll come out here occasionally and touch base with you guys. Well, we all know we have very busy. Everybody's very busy lives everywhere. Thank you. 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 Thank what? I can send him one. I can send him one. Yeah, I need another one. Okay. All right. You're more welcome to say if you'd like, but thank you. And okay. I'm going to uh, take off and get another thing. <laughs> oh, go <laughs> oh, ahead. Rocky. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, one 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 Two, um, just, I mean, it, is there an idea of what the, is there going to be a difference in the prior contract? To the new contract, the cool contract is staying place. the same, I believe, with a five percent increase. Each yeah, year, yeah, which it's is kind just of like to cover inflation. Yep. Yeah. Right. I think it's a few bucks more, but it's not. I, I think it was like five thousand dollars or seven thousand or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I apologize. I, I glanced at it. Right, it was just a little bit there. more. Yeah. I just, I just wondered. Cause obviously, one of the. Um, one of the things that I think, as you mentioned, the detective service and stuff, we don't have that obviously that's paid for. But, uh, that's, there's always some, there's, yeah, there's yeah. Well, administrative yeah. costs and right. that factor in some right. of that stuff, yeah. but it's it's factored in a, you know, it's one of those things, if we don't use it, we yeah. don't use it, we right. way over, and, yeah. but it's a balancing act we've got. Yeah. No, I just so. you mentioned the detective service as being part of the contract. Won't that detective service be covered regardless if we have a contract? Is that an investigation that you guys would do for the fact that we pay county taxes for the sheriff's department? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly. Okay. Um, I just wanted to clarify that because obviously that would be, you know, if something happened in, in Weberville and Olive County, we didn't have a contract with Weberville, you guys would still have to do sure. detective services as part of. Tax that we already paid the county for that service, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're just, I mean, you're obviously paying for a service specifically for Waterloo. Right. Right. So. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Josh Rocky's our DDA president, so he's our our other part of the program for the Tiffin District. So he he's in charge of the industrial park and the downtown area development. So. So him and I collaborate quite a bit. We appreciate the extended 80 hours. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I think it'll be obviously more, much more effective to yeah. provide yep. good service up here. So. Yep, get with us and we'll get that going. And we'll in January 1. We'll make what, that happen. What's the name of the new deputy? Uh, we're Sean Allen. Allen? Yeah. Yep. You can't miss him. Great big tall guy. So. I just got a job as Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's a big guy. So All right. good. He's got a great story. You know him. So. He's good. a big guy. Thank you. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Nice Thank Thank you. Got cool. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. What is this USA Blue Book 100 pack sample stuff? Is that for the water testing? USA Blue Book sample packets. Yeah, the reagent packets. Water testing? Yeah. We've done a lot of that this year. Um, 
Okay, I'm gonna give Scott Gould our attorney. How are you doing today? Great, uh, thank you for asking. Um, oh, here we go. So, uh, in checking on the OMA, just to be out with the first issue, yes. Open Meetings Act. Yep. Um, while OMA, Open Meetings Act, requires a public body to give public notice when it meets, it has no requirement that the public notice include an agenda or a specific statement as to the purpose of a meeting. No agenda format is required by the Open Meetings Act. I double-checked the local ordinance. Uh, I did it pretty fast, but I didn't see anything even in our, or our own ordinance that obligates us to post an agenda in advance of a meeting. Um, kind of like what Mr. Rocky was saying is that the agenda really is fluid until you guys vote on it. I know we kind of touched on it last week or the last meeting as to when the agenda actually gets galvanized and that's that the first, it's up here at the very beginning what we do every time. So um, I guess to put the long and the short of it is if this village is so inclined to post the agendas, it's cheap insurance. I mean, it is what it is, but there's nothing that obligates us to do it. So. Um, moving on, uh, White Rose is still pending. I checked the register of actions uh, before I came here. Uh, the 425 agreement is probably the most pending important issue that's still uh, on the horizon. We are, Jessica and I have got the notices out, right? Uh, and uh, I believe the hearing on this matter at the Ingham County Commissioners will be December 12th, I think is the date. Does that sound right, Jessica? That sounds right. Okay. <laughs> On the 425 Leroy Township tax abatement, yep. uh, effectively giving that parcel back to Leroy for their tax. Dave Collins. Yep. Way through the train. Yep. So, um, do you know White Rose was sold? What? Why? I have not. No. So, well, I hope you can't learn, but I, I have that information. It's all hearsay. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and tell us to Scott. Well, uh, I only told our uh, ordinance officer. Yeah. I've heard from a number of people, including one of the tenants down at the at the White Rose property there, that Mr. Rittman has effectively sold the property. Um, there's been a number of names of parties who who may have been the buyer. Mm. Um, but my, it, from what I understand, it sounds like it's just a matter of the paperwork needs finished. Wow. Uh, so I mean. Whether or not it's true, or whether or not you know things could fall through at the last second, there's always that possibility. But it seems like, from what I understand, it's done. All right. Well, that uh, that's interesting you know, in a couple of ways for me on the legal side. <clears throat> One, I guess if uh, the stars line up and we get a new owner uh, and they abide by all the rules, great. <laughs> uh, on the flip side of it, um, if one of the things that pops up in my mind is that technically whenever you have a pending code enforcement violation and you sell that parcel um, you're actually kind of prohibited from selling that parcel because there's a pending action with the local government which i guess we on the information and i'll do my own digging to see if the conveyance actually happened and to see where we assert ourselves or not because like i said it if it seems to work out well, I don't know if we want to jam that thing up. You know. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I apologize that was your Sam, but I just wanted you to know as much as we can. Yeah, hey, I appreciate that. Hey, forward, happy news, good news, forward movement is what we'd like. So the other question that I would have, regardless of if this deal, if it exists and goes through, is how would the um, conditional zoning agreement would that stick with the property mm -hmm. or because it's changing hands that agreement would be null and void? That, that property, um, I'll double check it, but the most that Jay Ritten could convey with that property is the conditional agreement that he has. Mm -hmm. However, I have to double check the writing on that conditional zoning. It is plausible that the conditional zoning, all those conditions that we Gabe Rippon would not be able to be conveyed to the new owner, so the new owner would have to revert to a more restrictive um, zoning policy. Right. So I'd have to double check that. Okay. Um, yeah, right, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, in other words, Rippon cannot give more than what he has. I know that much. He cannot right. say, you're wide open. Here, you know, give me a million bucks. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. What else you got, Mr. Scott? Those are really the only pending issues I have at the moment. The other program is nothing. Merry Christmas. As to the MML or? Yep. No, uh, I've got a, my letter I'm still working on. I know the, the council gave me a green light to put that letter together. I was out sick last week. Um, but the letter, I want it to be a little more sophisticated than just a letter with a thread. I wanted to, as I mentioned last week, put together a, just a brief synopsis of what I think the courts and how they would rule in our favor to the MML to help convince them to move forward on paying us out. So I'm uh, hoping to get that done this this week or next week. And I'll forward it to the city or the village in advance of me actually paying it out too. So gotcha. Okay, any other questions for our lawyer? Any other questions? Did you get your answer maybe from the so the agenda we can do a rough agenda, but I would think that we always put on here like if we had like the street for a hundred thousand dollars or something that was on there in case people wanted to come in or if we made the parking different or something like that was always on the agenda we knew it, it was solid but maybe some of it wouldn't be completely on there well i mean it would have been nice to have it out there that you know representative from the sheriff's department was going to be here today yeah it is yeah i got you okay so that said then we can go around to the next um Engineer reports, which is out where I don't think we have any, right, Jane? We're all good. No, uh, Jessica and Josh and I set up a meeting uh, for a grant for uh, the five the, the grant for Highview. Yeah. Yeah. For a grant for one hundred seventy thousand for Highview for uh, repavement. So just sign the papers on that and get that signed. So. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I I yeah. That's nice. So, but we have to come up with eighty-five thousand. I think we have to front money for high view. What? For high view? Yeah. I think whatever you get a grant, you have to front. Yeah, I thought it was a lot more than that. I thought it was yeah. to the tune of like two hundred or three hundred thousand. I see eighty-five thousand. This is maybe like a half a million dollar project. Mm. Yeah, they're doing it in that pizza and They're going to do the first first section with one of the grants and then because we didn't get approved for um they didn't approve both grants so they're looking at the one for the first section and then the second one and then 25 that is that yeah the second section from about where Applegate's driveway is back through tech drive yeah. and back down mason court yeah. um the other one um they said we might have a little bit of trouble getting because we've already got this grant. Right. But it's mm. it would help a lot if we finished our income study. Yeah. Yeah. One seventy, one seventy, and then I think I might have seen the eighty five would probably be the chain <laughs> grant. Yeah, it probably was. All right. Um, real quick on the engineering report is: Did you guys do the um, sidewalk concrete grinding? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. No. We still uh, plan. We still plan on it. Okay, because somebody brought it to my attention that they thought over where they put down the, the new concrete for Main Street by the party store that there's a, a significant lip there. I didn't, I walked by, I didn't, there wasn't clear to me, but there's, there's a little bit of okay. a lip. It, we, we figured we'd probably get that too, but okay, mostly perfect. we're going to focus on our stuff around the, around the village hall and stuff, so. Yeah, because somebody asked me, I said, I, Think they may have grounded it yet, but I don't know. No, no, okay. we we planned on we were gonna wait till after Thanksgiving and this week for tomorrow's um, lights and we've got to take our mower back into the uh, dealer. We either have a bad stator um, or something uh, again. Yeah, it's not. Of course, it's out of warranty, but we're gonna uh, bitch at them and we'll take it up there. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not charging. So we're gonna take that up there and drop that off, and we'll have the trailer, and then we can stop and pick that concrete uh, grinder up and bring it back. Okay. Because it's it's pretty bad across the road and on the south side of the building. That yeah. The trees at for sure. So we're gonna try to shape that up so it's not a trip hazard. Is that from Home Depot and Waverly Road? Is that where we get? Oh, we get it from Sunbelt. Okay. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they weren't very. Uh, Forgiving when you said the lawnmower came back not charging? The uh, X mark people? I, I haven't said people on the road yet. Okay. 
take it up there. So I'm going to call them and get that set up, take it in, and then call the uh, concrete planner. Okay. All right. There's a bummer on that X farm. We had such great luck with the X farm. Wouldn't they have had to take the stator off to do the head gasket? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. They they got, I don't know. know. Hmm. We didn't have problems with the battery when we took it up there. Right. Yeah. Advocate reports. Anybody have advocate reports? Um, the only thing Katie did is that she emailed us telling us that there's a mailbox on North Main that um, sticks out. Yeah. But, Katie, Katie Johnson said, yeah, but we got, they put, like, this stuff out, so she still wanted me to put it in the meeting so that you guys knew about it. It's just one of the, you see it on Main Street where you go up there and then the road just curves to the left where it connects to the neighborhood. Nobody's paying the lines yet, right? No lines have been taken out of the part, no. How do we get that done? Will we got to call him coming again? Yeah, but I don't, I don't think, but now it's too cold. Really? I think we're going to have Indian summer next week. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think it's going to be warmer next week than this week. But yeah, it's supposed to get up in the 40s. In the 40s. I mean, in theory, the county would probably hit that when they, or they only do Grand River when they come through, right? Yeah, I know, I know. I don't know, private guy, maybe they will hit it. Um, his last name is uh, Boris. Boris, you know, Dave Boris. Oh. oh, Dave Boris, a heat thrower. Yep. I wonder if you'll hit it. You probably will. I can, I can call because I actually know them. They're, they're friends. Well, great. Ask them so, to do that little section for us. Okay. That would be very nice. Thank you, Santa. You're very welcome. We'll have. His name's Randy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Randy. 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 I know Randy. I know Carol on that and that Karen on that. That was his sister's Karen on that. On that and Karen. Probably don't know them. You don't know them? <laughs> I don't know the rest we'll of them. have Deborah have a cheesecake made for you if you get that wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, definitely I'll be on it tonight. <laughs> I still get the recipe. She wants the recipe. <laughs> I don't know if Bella's going to give that. Yeah, I'll stop that cheesecake. Then. All right. Any advocate reports other than that? Anything else you see in the town that we're missing before we start getting some snow? No? All right. All right. Good. New business. Michael Stanfield, substitute crossing guard. I'm assuming that's you. Hey, Michael. Hi. You'd like to help us out on the crossing guard? Yeah. All right. Any recommendations from the council who can get him hired on here? You uh, meet the criteria of uh, his 18 or about uh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ma. What? I can't say a word. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to stay silent on this one. Okay. Um, I make a motion to hire Mr. Michael Stanfield, part-time crossing guard for the village of Weberville. Anybody here second? I'll second that. Xander second. Any other questions? Scott Gould, do you see any? I mean, that will work, right? Yeah. That works. Lana's there's a relationship? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's staying quiet. What's the hour rate? 11.33. Yep. So 11.33 would be the hour rate. Okay. Yep. We, it's better than having Jessica go out there. You're going to give me your reflections. Oh, 100%. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Roll call, please. Shelby? Yes. Shelby? Yes. Uh, Walter? Yes. Yes. Welcome aboard. We also have a room when you get done doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Zoning and outdoor storage amendment. So, so that's the stuff you guys wanted from Chris last meeting. He's not here. He wrote up, he wants you guys to kind of just go over it and look through it. Because okay. um, we haven't done the. I don't remember. Now we're going to have whatever you want, but they still have to do um, a public hearing and all that, too. I think we should wait until we we'll just wait on the zoning and the storage of the amendment that Jim Wright was working on with us that we haven't seen from Chris Corey. Mm -hmm. I won't see that until about the changing range. Okay, everybody okay with skipping that? There's so, no motion to table until yep. January. Yep, that okay. work. Who's motioning the table? 
so I will make a motion okay. to table, table the discussion of zoning and outdoor storage till the January meeting. Second. Okay, the second by Lana. All in favor say aye. 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 Both in line. Table. Okay, Ryan Jones raise. I recommended the council. He got more licenses for a $2 an hour raise for Ryan Jones as requested when we hired him in once he got the valid licenses that would be compatible with the shape. So would that bring him to the upper range of what the job posting was? 30. Yeah. The range of 30. Thank you, because I was going to actually ask that question too. So yep. thank you, Sam. I recommend it. So moved. Second. Second. Second by same any discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pro mm -hmm. comments. Yes. Schoenberg? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Walter? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. Anybody got a chance to look over our 2024 schedule? Mm -hmm. I did have a question. Where are we doing the community picture this year? No. Or yes. next year? I thought okay. we were. I thought That's we were one on the committee in January yeah. to I was to just, help you up. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that we could all assist you. If you got a if you get a group of people together, that is kind of a bridge trying to grow on one because it's so hard to get people to want to out right. to put on a quick Friday picture. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's why. Right. Yeah. The last time we had discussed this after the picnic. I okay. thought we had agreed yeah. upon forming a committee to help okay. Jessica bring in yeah. more things for like little kids mm -hmm. and the little kids definitely yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. moving it to the high school parking lot. And then the girls got yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. What Absolutely. weekend in September was that again? It's the fourth weekend in September. I'm gonna concentrate on the fourth weekend in September, the one in July. Just I'm so overwhelmed with what I do. I'm not available. Okay. So the fourth weekend in September. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you guys want? That's September twenty-eighth. Yeah, I'll get the car clubs to come in. Okay. And so that'd be awesome. Cool. I, I can help on farm. Like I said, I can go through that one catalog, get a bunch of things that I was talking about with the swimming pool and sand and right. bearing and things and even the water with the rubber duckies and things like that. So I think that was just don't the rubber duckies. Oh, no, they forget <laughs> the rubber duckies. So they can get the rubber duckies. And that's what, well, not so much down here, but here. Is that the pier? Yeah. Oh, so we got a lot of kids this year. There was a lot of kids this year. There was a lot of kids this year. And I ran into a few of them. Okay, cool. The only potential wrinkle that I see, and I don't, I'm not proposing a change, but I did notice the the second meeting in november is the tuesday before thanksgiving and i don't know if that's going to cause problems if people are traveling there i think you should play that one by ear too yeah. like you know a lot going on mm -hmm. i saw that too because with school how they do the time off and a lot of people they get off work and they're going to be like you said traveling right. they want to mm -hmm. leave early to avoid traffic yeah. yeah i don't know if that would affect any anybody on the council but no, it's the only potential good. problem that I saw. Yeah, I'm good. But I'd say we just leave it and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then on the kind of council, see if we have anything on the agenda. Okay. The suit and can't wait, but. So we don't have to recommend any on that, or we're just good with it because it says look over. Mm -hmm. It's not like a motion. I'll have the final one done for the next meeting. Okay. I'll make a motion on it. All right. Comcast proposal. Sam, you want to take that one, or? Um, I mean, I don't know, Jessica, you, I think you were the one that oh. got this together, right? Yeah, I got the proposal, but I gave it to Josh to look because he was going to look between WOW and Comcast. And yeah, I, I, my only involvement was when we did the ribbon cutting with Comcast folks, is I, I asked them if there was anything that they could do with, if we signed up with them having the DPW building and the village sure. building on one bill yeah. and trying to get a cost saved that way. So I'll let Josh speak as to whether or not that is. It looks like they're treating that as two separate entities and two separate buildings. So we're really sort of giving that discount. Two different um, one of the things I don't like about it is that they lock you into a 36 month contract 
they state what your different increases are going to be at the very end of the contract. They really don't say that, um, right. what the price is going to be. Um, so I have our uh, Comcast rep and WOW rep both are looking. I have them providing quotes, which I will have at the next meeting for you guys, just so you can compare apples to apples. Um, one of the suggestions I might have for the DPW would be a um, business continuity um, service, which basically would be a backup internet that runs off the cell network in case the DPW's internet goes down. They actually have a backup because obviously they're going to need it for weather and other related things, um, security wise. But, um, but that's, I mean, Comcast, the difference is. I looked over, since we've taken over the IT for the village, I looked at the historical connection. And besides power outages, there hasn't been any connection interruption to the village, village at all. Um, so it's hard to talk reliability when it comes to this building, because obviously WOW has been reliable here. Um, so, and the difference really is going to be a you know, faster speed and cheaper with WOW. And then Comcast is a bigger corporation, so you might get more reliability, you know, a little bit different service. So, um, but I think it's fair minded to bring you guys both proposals and see which one is, you know, cost effective and, you know, which one would be the, the best option. Um, or even doing, you know, with that, we could always do a mix back too, where it's like, say, the village office is on Comcast and DPW is on WOW, or vice versa, you know, to kind of deficient the, um, you know, the service because it doesn't look like either one of them do a discount because you have two services. Like, it's, they treat them as two different buildings, two different entities, essentially. So you're really not getting a combined difference between them. So, so you basically want what you're saying is you basically want to table this until until the next meeting. I'll have the numbers from WOW too, and then I'll also have a couple. Um, I want to look at a couple different options for Comcast for different speeds um, because they just have 500, but obviously they have a gig. They have other options too. So I'd like to be able to show you guys the difference. The WOW and the Comcast. Yeah. Yeah, then that way you guys can make more of an informed decision on which one is better, plus I can give you more metrics between the two so that you know, hey, this is what Comcast is offering directly, and this is what WOW is, and this is how they compare. Or right, right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Motion to table the Comcast proposal. <coughs> second, excuse me, until the next meeting. And I'll second that. Second by Sandra. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Pass. All right. Scott Gould. What do we do? Uh, our buddy Chris Corey showed up that we tabled the zoning ordinance, which was number two. What do we do? Can we go back to it? Yeah, I think so. I've been uh, motion. Motion to reopen it back up because Chris Corey showed up. Yeah. I recommend the council that we can. Reopen the zoning and outdoor storage amendment because Chris Corey just showed up here at 6.40 p.m. So moved. Second. Second. Second by Sandra. All in favor say aye. 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 Hold the same sign. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Hey, everyone. Uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, don't worry about that. It's all yours now. All right. So we got a couple of zoning amendments that uh, Jim Wright and I have, are, are recommending here. Um, they're not really related to each other, but uh, I figured we'd move them as one um, if the council is amenable to that. The first one, our commercial districts uh, allow single family homes to remain in place, continue to be used, don't treat them as non conformities, there's no restrictions on them, etc., as long as they continue to be used as single family homes. Uh, we have had one such home that was converted to a business and has been converted back to a home. Um, Jim has some building code concerns with that because the requirements for a business and a home are very different and to kind of yo-yo back and forth is create some issues uh, and he would like to stop that remedy at the zoning level. So the first one uh, keeps the situation the same for any house that continues to be a house doesn't lose that status. Uh, 
you know, it'll be sold, it may be vacant for a while, so long as it continues to be a house. But one house that's converted to a business cannot go back to being a residential house anymore. That's what the amendment would say. Uh, so we don't mind getting those, those types of issues going forward. The second one is a term that's come up, uh, well, particularly with 4696 Grand River, but in other contexts as well, and that is outdoor storage, which obviously is important to some industrial businesses to be able to have their outdoor storage and logistics um, as part of their business operation. But we do have zoning rules around it. It requires a special use permit, requires a screening fence, and that sort of thing. Um, we've had some enforcement difficulties because we don't have a definition of what outdoor storage is in the zoning ordinance. So we've had people say, well, uh, how do you know that's outdoor storage? How long does it have to be outside before it's storage? What is the definition of outdoor? And this gets a little silly. But without anything to lean on the ordinance, that's what can happen. So the, the other one is a proposed definition of outdoor storage, which would read, the keeping in an unroofed area of any goods, junk, material, merchandise, equipment, inoperable vehicles, or trailers in the same place for more than 24 hours. So it answers that how long question within 24 hours. It's got a list of what types of things can, you know, being stored outside counts as outdoor storage, etc. cetera. Uh, refers to unroofed area, so putting something, having something under a roof, screened by walls, counts as outdoors. That all answers a number of questions that have come up in the past. So we're trying to kind of cover them all in that one sentence. Uh, with that, obviously, any questions, revisions, or um, you know, comments, uh, we'll all take. We can make changes. Uh, or if you want to move these forward, uh, the, the action tonight would be schedule a public hearing. Uh, we don't have one scheduled for tonight, so you can't take official action. Um, but if you are amenable to these, then scheduling a public hearing would be appropriate. The only issue that I foresee with the outdoor storage, granted I've always been a proponent of defining this um, and, and curbing that activity there, is the way this is written would pretty substantially in the, uh, Little Dusty's auction house, being that occasionally they do have large items that they cannot reasonably fit inside their building, mm -hmm. that because of the nature of the business may sit there for a week prior to one of their customers purchasing it. Okay. And by 24 hours, that wouldn't really enable them to do that anymore. I don't know. Could they get a special, special use permit for something like that? They, yeah. they could. For that particular site, you guys have denied a special use permit for that in the past. Okay. <coughs> uh, and, and it would have to be fenced in, so you wouldn't be able to see it, which could be a problem with the little The auction house. Oh! So why not make it a week or two? Well, and that's that's kind of the rub is I don't I don't know by making it a week to appease and or not to appease but to to not ruffle any feathers with little dusties mm -hmm. is then having it be a week kind of defeats the purpose of outdoor storage with the other more industrial businesses. Just from what I've seen, I'd be worried about well we moved it ten feet over. I mean, I, I would be afraid of, right, they would play games with that one week, and, and it's tough to track something for a week. I mean, we would effectively have to take pictures. I mean, if it got ugly in court, yeah, the court might say, do you have pictures for Monday to Monday of every day that thing sat there? And that may be problematic to an enforcement. Well, what about stating 48 hours? That gives them two days, so if it sells, they can contact the person and say, we can't keep it stored for you any longer than 48 hours. Well, I mean, they're, I mean, presumably, they're going to obtain the item that they're selling. Um, I, I know in previous auctions, a truck on a trailer Correct. sat outside in the parking lot for two weeks because they buy it, then they list it, then the auction runs for a week, and then the owner, the new owner, prospectively, has a week to pick it up, so it's not unfathomable that that type of business would have something like that for more than a week or even two. So I don't I don't know, Chris, in this instance, I know that we, the council has denied special use for that property, but could a special use permit be granted for a specific business on that property? It, it could be. I mean, the fact that you denied it before, it was years ago, so there's definitely, there's a a limit in the zoning ordinance. If you get denied, you can't apply for the same thing for a year. But we're talking five, six years ago now, so it could be applied for again on the same property. 
you could also, and, and especially used associated with site plan, right? So if Little Dusties came in and they gave themselves a little fence that just went around kind of their building or maybe to the side of their building and fenced in an area where they could keep things however long they wanted because it was fenced in and they got a special use permit for it, that would be accepted. Obviously, sort of the politics of that site and the landlord um, and the other tenants that may be a little more complicated than it may otherwise be, but for some, any other, in, in a vacuum, if they said, hey, look, we have auction items, they come in, they're big, we got to store them outside, okay, fence in a little area, mm -hmm. or however big you think you need, doesn't have to be a whole site, just fence in a little area, and come to us for approval and put up the fence, and then you're good. Right. The other thing that, that occurred to me that you could conceivably do is allow for some sort of temporary outdoor storage permit to be issued, um, for like up to seven or 14 days. It wouldn't require you to come to council or get a special use permit or even you know, fence anything in. You'd just be like, hey, I have this thing. Uh, I'm doing this at auction and I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I, I just need two weeks to have it outside without being bothered, right? Um, and, and you go to gym and you get a, he signs off on the permit, you put your thing out there 14 days later, you gotta either take it down or get a more permanent approval. And I like that, that, that it starts the timeline. They yeah, yeah. going to start the timeline. Yeah, and, we, and I, I would recommend if you just only that it would be a permit. It would just be a free for all. Uh, but it wouldn't have to come to council, and it wouldn't be a special use permit that runs with the land and is you know for a fence. It's just like, hey, I have something. You could even you could even. Uh, so that would that be like on a per item basis or just. Uh, yeah, I think that we maybe we put a limit on the number of times you can do that in calendar year. I mean, I was going right? to say. I mean, I know. I know Rick fairly well that I know he's trying to get into more of that type of stuff where I'm sure probably every week then he's going to be potentially wanting to get a permit. Should go online with Jim Wright's new program. Yeah. Right? That new deal we go online get it. Yeah. It's gonna start costing you money, plus we don't want people abusing abusing that, right? Right. Like, oh well, it's every two weeks I re up it. I mean, part of Dusty's like with the fencing and then part of his business. I mean, I know like when he had a truck out there and you know, when he's had some stuff, it's actually drawn people into his business to be like, hey, I want to do that. How do right. I do that? So obviously, fencing and then, you know, could negatively affect his business. Well, we don't want to do that. And obviously, I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm usually myself from the DDA standpoint, I'm usually really against creating more laws and creating more ordinances because we have someone that abused a previous situation because then that only hurts the good businesses coming in. Um, I mean, I, I know that there is an issue there, but it also kind of sucks because we had an ordinance that obviously the landlord of that property ignored completely with all the plastic stuff and went through and cost so, a lot of money. So we've never gotten resolution of that. So even if we do this ordinance, it's just gonna, if, if it continues, it's getting to pin our ticket, and then we just keep adding more attorney fees. <laughs> I guess, I guess we'll start I mean, are you talking about the white rose in the current situation? Yeah. Well, I know it's been exhausting with the white rose. It's got to come to a conclusion at some point. And from that point, provided that we prevail, um, it's going to be a fast track for future litigation issues oh, no. because we'll, I'll be able to point, look, the court ruled in our favor on this matter. You know, so. and, and Chris, for your knowledge, because you weren't here yet, there was a discussion earlier. In my opinion, it's only hearsay at this point, but I've heard it from private citizens and one of the tenants down at the property that Jay has sold that property. I, I heard that rumor as well. Um, I don't really want to bring it up. On the record, but yeah. I, <laughs> I heard that rumor as well. Yeah, which is I'm not mentioning names or any parties. It's as like I said, as far as I'm concerned, the people who told me, I have good trust and faith in that they're not going to smoke. But I'm also until I see a piece of paper, or some sort, some something of proof. It's it's speculation and hearsay. The other thing that I was going to ask is in this definition. Would it at all make sense to make it exclusionary to retail goods? That are goods that are available for retail sale. Correct. Immediate retail sale, as in I can walk on the property and walk off with that good. Correct. That's an interesting idea. That's the way it was when it was car lumber. That's a good point. Right. That is, that's a very good point, Brad. Awesome. 
We can do that. Yeah, we could say, you know, goods available for immediate retail purchase shall not be considered outdoor storage under this ordinance. Right. And therefore, don't require a permit. Right, because ultimately, I'm sure if there was a manufacturing business in there, or uh, if there was a business that was sto in cold storage, oh, well, that RV back there is for sale. Okay, well, are you a retail business? Because then that becomes uh, another zoning and ordinance thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, what's for sale? Well, can I hand you money and drive it off the lot? Oh, no, I don't have the keys, blah, blah, blah. It's right. not operable. Okay, well, no, that doesn't count, right? Um, and, and it does say inoperable vehicles. Like, right. that's already in there. An operable vehicle doesn't count as storage in park. So if you do have a vehicle that's for sale, you park it somewhere, if it's operable, it's, like, it's got a license plate, it's all set, it's no big deal. You can park things, you know. Um, I, I think that goes, yeah, I mean, the, the other aspect would be, we did have the same issue with when U-Haul was proposing there, you know, okay, they're gonna have the rental trailers out, et cetera, so I, I do like this idea. The immediate retail sale. Is the U-Haul still there? No. 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 Did you see where they moved down to the Williamson? Old B&G. Yeah. Yeah. Good place. Yeah. For that. Should work. It's got that trucking company there too. Yep. Yeah, good frontage. The front door. Just out of our town again. We have the great people that have been nice to keep it here. Right. Now on the uh, the house switch from commercial to the residence, um, I, I still, um, I mean, my personal feeling on that, I still kind of half and half just because I, I understand the situation that happened, but then I get worried about too is that we're strapping. I mean, if you live on Grand River, you're already, you know, in the commercial district, you're already kind of at a disadvantage because you have such traffic going up and down your road. One of the benefits you have is the ability to convert your property to a business. And then obviously subsequently convert back. I just would worry about. I mean, commercial properties, especially downtowns, don't really sell for as much currently than what residential True. sells. So I'd be concerned with if we, if someone moved it, if then it would basically be strapped forever with that. So instead of having, uh, you know, someone that took their house turned into a business, the business leaves. Someone buys it, they want to turn back in the house because you know they decide not to, and then the house just becomes an abandoned piece of property forever because it's zoned commercial and it can never be turned back into a house. Yeah. And that that would be my big concern because then you're you're basically you know funneling people into a corner that I just I I would be worried about um, just because of that aspect of the difference in cost for a commercial building and residential, you know, and I would much rather see. You know, say for instance, in Sonic Lodge, if they decide to turn that into a house, which it obviously must have been at one point, I would much rather see that be occupied than be abandoned. You know, just like the bank, if someone decided randomly, they're like, hey, I want to turn the bank into a house, I would be okay with that because it's not just a vacant building. Are, are you aware of the specific issues that Jim has with the, with the coding differences between a, com a commercial and a residential property? Yeah, not, not in as much detail as he would be, but um, the electrical, the plumbing, bathrooms in particular um, are, are fairly significant change. And that was a um, that was an issue with Alpha Omega specifically while they were trying to convert that house is that you know they basically moved in plugged in some some computers and were ready they were ready to go. Which was like, you're a business now and there's a list of building code items that have to be accomplished here. Um, ADA requirements or another one. And going back to a house, it's like, all right, well now I have two single occupancy bathrooms instead of one bathroom with a shower. Now I gotta put it back together again, or I might the kitchen's been ripped out. I mean, is there any turned into a kitchenette for an office and how am I gonna put that back together? And is, is there any reason that if the property owner put the building back into code with with residential that it could then be converted? I mean, I know to Josh's point, that's kind of adding extra hurdles and steps that if somebody didn't have the money or the resources to be able to do that, then they're kind of stuck in the water. But yeah, I'm yeah glad it's like if we do an inspection fee or or an inspection or something that would initiate the building 
part of it, I think, would be great. Um, I would be, just the, the wording you put on it may sound like once it switches to commercial, it can never go back. Yeah, which is, which is how it's written. It doesn't have to stay that way. Yeah. Um, it could, uh, I, I think that Jim advocated to me to do this because he wants to stop these types of processes before someone moves in somewhere and is out of code compliance and he has to make a bunch of renovations. We want to be able to say, no, you're not allowed to do that before anything goes out of the rails. That said, we can put it in zoning ordinance that you shall not move in until you've met the building code requirements for residential again, mm -hmm. so that it's not, there's no like, oh, I'm allowed to do this, go and sleep at my house. No, you can use it for single family, you can use it for residential, but now you've got to bring it back to residential standards before you move in, and it says that right here. Right. So we could, Jake, that would soften it, but it would still give us language to enforce, hey, you know, this was a business last week, and now you moved in a residential tenant. We can't just be bouncing back and forth like that. You have to keep the building in the right code category. I mean, would it all at all be feasible to just have like a kind of like a cooling off period of just you know, okay, it converts to commercial. It has to stay commercial for X amount of time, be it six months, a year, and then same with residential is okay. It converts back, but you know. It's not going to be granted to go back to commercial for X period of time. I mean, if the issue really is just a rapid flip flopping of, you know, one week it's this or next month it's that, I mean, that seems like the root of the problem. We, we could do something like that. Um, it, it all goes back to the issue of people asking uh, forgiveness and not permission. Right. Yeah. And, and if we get people in the office asking what they need to do, we can give them fairly simple answers. And we're not going to give them. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's going to be cheap on their end in terms of the renovations or whatever, but the answer can be simple. And with your ordinances, it's very rarely no. It's usually here's what they have to do, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's something that just kind of we could we could do something like that. We could have a six month, you know, once you're this, you're that for six months, and you're not eligible for something else. Was not there a realtor sign out on this house for sale? Wasn't there a realtor that yeah. sold it to these people? Yeah. So how would they sell it to the people without having the right criteria to be a home resident? I don't know. How? It, it, yeah, that one, that one in particular. Yeah. Out there. I mean, all of a sudden, it, you never, it house, never got all the way to being a, a roof for business. They so were operating out of that. Somebody here said, no, like, the realtor said, okay, we're going to sell this as a home. The people walk in, there's no kitchen, and there's two boys in the girl bathroom and no shower. I mean, something's got to stop that for them not to move in or, or yeah. even get the money to buy. We can, so. I mean, we we would already. Somebody should have went through the inspection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. We should, well, I think one of the things we should, we can put in here is you must get a change of use permit to do that. You must get a zoning permit right before you do it. Now, which is already the rule, but it's the kind of thing that it's way out somewhere else in the zoning ordinance that says that you have to get a permit to do it, and we could put it here. Where it says, so I think what they're seeing, if they're checking the zoning ordinance at all, is, oh, in the commercial district, you let people have single family homes. And I wouldn't change that policy because you have so many homes that are in commercial districts. And we do not, well, I mean, the last thing we're going to do is create problems for existing homeowners or even renters where the place they live in is hard to insure or borrow against because it's supposed to be commercial. It's not what we want to do. We want to allow those houses. It's the it's the bouncing back and forth that's the concern. Right. So, I mean, I think that saying, like, hey, if you want to switch from commercial to residential, residential to commercial, there's our process, and here's what it is. There you, so go. you get a zoning permit, and, you, and Jim Wright says, here are the renovations you must do before someone goes in. None of us were able to check it, right? Yeah. None of us were able to. Somehow, somebody had to, that was commercial. And if they did the kitchen changing and the bathroom changing, <laughs> The residents can't go in there and add a resident home knowing that they were changed. But I went out there a couple of times and there were drop cords running everywhere. So I don't know. I don't think they changed the electrical part of it. No, they didn't. They just ran. They were yeah, yeah. everywhere. They ran right. extension cords all over the house. That's what they did. You'd hate to have somebody come to your town and then, because we got the stuff in there for e-dresses we never had before that helped with Jim Wright's help to make sure people were safe in town. So now this, he should have been able to go out there and expect that home before they moved in. To make sure it was okay, but we only do that with rental property. But something yeah, like that, going commercial to rural resident, should have been even have a flag up for a realtor to say, "Hey, look, this didn't meet all the criteria." 
you know, they definitely can't sell a house without a bathtub or a shower, you would think. And then, well, I mean, I think with that situation is that is a kind of a unique property that has bounced back and forth quite a bit. You know, so it is, again, one of these unique situations that, you know, I mean, I, I, think, I think what he's proposing of having a zoning change I mean, honestly, when you do a zoning change anyway, um, you have to do a public hearing, don't you? That's right. Mm -hmm. that uh, to do a zoning district change? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that would be good too because you also don't want, you know, as much as I don't want to ban house or ban building in the town, I also don't want to see, you know, your next door neighbor that you live next to in the next 20 years sells it and it becomes a, you know, like retail business that people are in and out at all hours of the day. And so then that just changed completely like your, you know, your sellability of your house because all of a sudden there's a business right next to you that wasn't there prior. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think, think something like that would be good to have at least a little bit of a, you have to get for approval to, you know, be zoned this and approval to go back to it. We can also potentially take a look at the places where we have houses zoned commercial or village core. Yeah. That, because it's um, the idea that, that I promoted 10 years ago that we should push that zoning district east and west to allow for business growth may be dated, right? With what, you, with what you're saying, Josh, about the market. Yeah. And commercial and residential markets right now. So we have some blocks, especially going west of downtown, that are entirely residential. We could potentially ship them back, and if that's something you want, you guys want me to bring some information on. It would take some houses out of this system. Yeah, um, and we wouldn't necessarily have to change the master plan. So if someone wanted to take it back, they could do that. Right. But uh, those are all require public hearings, and that's very different than just renovating a house. Yeah. I mean, I would rather. I mean, I think the village core and how you guys set it up before, I think, is is reasonable to give us a potential growth down the road of. And again, it doesn't shoehorn people that it gives people options for their property if they're on Grand River, which is, like I said, is a, it is a benefit because you do, you're living on a very no, no easy road, no easy road that's constantly traffic, you know, 24 7. So them having the option that they can go to commercial if, you know, might do it. I mean, right now, like obviously, like I said, residential is really high, but. If the market turns, it might be commercial might be the better choice to get rid of a piece of property, or True. honestly, even if it happened to be, you know, for instance, a house that's run down, maybe the best option is to hold those and put a two-story building with apartments above them. Yep. You know, then we have some empty lots too. Right. That were houses and could be, yeah, well, you know, mixed use or apartments or something that's more market driven. So I, I'm fine with it. The, the zoning districts can stay how they are. I just thought if we wanted to like, lower the number of houses in the situation, we can do that. Right. So you got an idea what we need? So then we just schedule you a public hearing. So the next time we can throw that something you come up with? Uh, yeah, if you're comfortable with that. So um, what I'm hearing is on the outdoor storage issue, increase from 24 hours to 48. Let's say goods available for immediate retail sale, um, maybe more rental, shall not be considered outdoor storage. Um, and then on the houses, we create a system where it very clearly says if you want to switch from residential to commercial or commercial to residential, uh, you must get a permit for that. You must make the renovations before the new use moves in, which is supposed to go without saying, but you know. And then uh, you cannot change back for six months once you flipped over. With all that said, what does that mean that Jim Wright can go in to make sure that it was corrected? Uh, yeah, once we get the build, once we get a building permit for the interior renovations, then yes, that the permit gives him the ability to do that. In my opinion, when it went commercial to resident, he should have been able to go out there and go look. Did this get switched back so it can yep. be renovated? Yeah, and that, and that it's it, it renovated for somebody mentioned that we do that for rentals but not for home ownership. And I don't think we should have it for, we shouldn't do that to every homeowner, but in this particular situation, yeah, maybe saying you gotta get an inspection as if you were a rental makes some sense. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious the people that actually realtor that sold it, you have to make sure they met the right program too. But. Yeah. All right, so I recommend the council we schedule a public hearing for 
the zoning and outdoor storage amendment for the meeting in December. We don't know if it's the one before or after. I have um, a question here before we believe her. Yeah, do you just want to wait till Chris has the ordinance for you guys to vote on it and then schedule a public hearing? You can't vote on it unless we have a public hearing first. Okay. But we got to make sure the schedule part of Well, so your next meeting is December 12th. Yeah, so that's actually too close to do a public hearing, so you have to have 15 days notice. So conceivably, I could. I was just going to put December. Okay. But, but I could I could get the changes back to you guys for December 12th, so you can see the changes before the actual public hearing. But you can still set a public hearing tonight. Are you having a second meeting in December? Uh, 19th. We'll find out. 17th. Yeah. Just only a week apart, so we'll see if that even happens. Okay. The 19th, we can still we can still notice a public hearing for it. Maybe not. I mean, we'll push it to January. Yeah, I was going to say they're yeah. not going to push it to January. On it, so long. I just wanted to have it so we yeah. can put it on on the public to know that we're actually going to Yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, scheduling a public hearing, I think it'd be good, but yeah. Instead of trying I, I would just say it'd be nice for you guys to see the physical copy of it. That way, you guys aren't doing basically discussion at the public hearing in case something is, you guys know this is off and you're like, oh, wait a minute, this has to be changed and then you have yeah. to make a modification. So if there is a public hearing and all that. If you can have that ready for December 12th is our next meeting and then we'll yeah. schedule the public hearing for January, what hour? Sometime in January. Yeah. yeah. January. Either first or second. Mm -hmm. Is it the ninth? Your first meeting in January? It would be January 9th or January 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as as Actually, I'm more likely to be able to be here on the 23rd. The 23rd of December? Of, uh, no, no, January. no, of January. Okay. <laughs> 23rd of January, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twenty-four. I just wanted to add a sort of public news of what we were doing, so they had more time than just the few days. Yeah, this way it gives them time. like is quite quite, quite a bit of time. Yeah. Is there any more you want from us, Chris? I don't think so. I'll have. The... So we'll try to we'll try to get this all sewed up so on January twenty-third, twenty-four. Is what we can vote on, and then in the meantime, you'll send us something else. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, just a quick question. I didn't hear the complete definition of what the outdoor storage was. Okay. The Chris, only part I heard was it had to have a roof. Yeah, I'll uh, read it again. Okay. Um, so here's what we've got, including the changes. The keeping in an unroofed area of any goods, junk, material, merchandise, equipment, inoperable vehicles, or trailers in generally the same place for more than 48 hours. Goods available for immediate retail sale or rental shall not be considered outdoor storage. Does it still make sense to keep merchandise in there? Is that completely point. retail? That, that implies retail. Cut that. Junk, by the way, is a defined term. Yep. And we also have rules on what is and is not an inoperable vehicle. So by this definition, the roofed areas on the side of those buildings would not be considered outdoor storage. That is, no, they would be. They are, oh no, I'm sorry. No, they would not be. Mm. Yes, they would not be considered outdoor storage by this definition. Gotcha. Um, now we can change that. Do you have a definition of what the roof is? Yes, yeah, roof, is, roof and walls are defined as mm -hmm. Tarp tent considered a roof? What? Tarp tent considered a roof? Uh, no, but we have considered it adequate screening in the past when we were looking at a definition. You said if you've got a roof and you hang a tarp down from it, you can't see it, that's good enough. But you have to you know, putting up a tent where the roof is not permanent. That doesn't count. And how do we feel about outdoor storage on those? I call them personally lean-to areas. It's always nice to have something that's stored. You don't have to see it. So right. even if it was on a lean-to and you get the little tarps that roll down and just seal it off, it looks nicer than driving by and you see it all outside. Yeah, I guess. 
my only trepidation is adequate screening is vague. I mean, I don't I don't want to see bright blue tarps no. hanging out. I think that would look worse. Right. The protest should have 12 foot fence all the way around that. We wouldn't have to talk about any of this. We know what is going on. I, I mean, I have no objection to saying it has to be outside of a structure and putting it on, under a roof with no walls does not count. And the temporary walls, like tarps, don't count and things of that nature. Those are not, that's that's still outdoor storage. We, I, I'm fine with that. We can be strict on that. Okay. I, th I, I really don't know how I feel about it. Irish. <laughs> I see the potential for abuse with it. I mean, yeah. it's not because we had the abuse of that property. Right. If we had had something that didn't. Stuff is stored under there now, and gosh, it looks so much better than it has, but it still doesn't look as good as it could be. But the, the, you know, at the same time, that really, in defense of the property, whatever that may be, it really restricts how they could use that property. I mean, you've got those great big overhang areas that you can't do anything with. You put a picnic table under it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and it's on the back part of that property, but I mean, you just know, start off generally, you can see it well, from the yeah. end. Right, right, right. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. They always look nice. Nice. Or, or, I'll say the east and west side. Yeah. yeah. Of the outer, of the outer buildings. Always look yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. But head out, so long head out, nice door storage yeah. lumber there. I yeah, know that's it. true. Yeah. I mean, it's stacked up junk, but that's different. But then, like, say a row of campers. That's true. That's like, who cares? Can I find an office? Well, with, what's, the, what's the consensus on that? Let me talk about what we're talking about. Those overhang areas, lean to areas, is that outdoor storage you put stuff there? I think Josh's point is good, but it's. Well, I guess you couldn't still store junk there, I don't think. Well, it makes you. If you are storing junk, as we find it at all, Junkyard and require permits right. for that. Exactly. So it's actual garbage, then we have other rules. Right. If it's things you use for your business, which is really what this is targeted at, then it's these rules. Right. Things for your business, or if you did have a camper or something there that is cold storage, could be worse. Yeah, I mean, having a bunch of campers lined up all the way underneath all their look bad you know, if they're all smashed up campers that's a different story but that's a jump I mean, people if someone's just storing you know i mean yeah i kind of look at that property because that's a very unique property too yeah so you don't you know future owners of that we kind of don't want to have them have all these random lean to that they can't make any money from them. right that's, that's my other concern with it so I, I guess i'm okay leaving it under <laughs> Yeah, as is with the exclusion of, of merchandise in that first sentence. Okay. Yep, okay. so January 23rd public hearing, revisions for December 12th meeting, which I unfortunately have a conflict with, but I can send someone to discuss the revisions and take notes if you want. <clears throat> or if you email over to Jessica, she has any super questions, we can have Jim Wright show up with it. Could we? That's true. I can see if Jim can be here that night. Jim Wright likes to come like once every other month. Yeah. So you don't have to make a special trip since you live in Grand Rapids in the gated community. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a pretty busy road. Uh, no, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask Jim if he can come that night and uh, give you his perspective on some of these items. Sure. Um, okay. Any other questions? I think that'll work. Yeah, just have Jim write. He'll he'll fit in somewhere better. Or then the next meeting we gotta make sure that we do the public hearing for the January twenty third twenty fourth. Yes. So next meeting you want to set that, and then Jessica will do the notice. And okay. There's plenty plenty of time for January twenty third. Okay. Thank you very much. Special event for men, Christmas parade, and tree lighting. Yep. Make a motion to approve the special event permit for the Christmas parade and tree lighting. So moved. Second. 
Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both say aye. Special event for a holiday event. <coughs> Motion to adjourn the event. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mom. Oh. Make a motion to approve a special use permit for the library to have a unicorn out in front of the library on November 29th between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. So moved. Second. Okay. Oh, yeah. So sorry, second. Now we're all out of the oh, Sorry. Where you got me going. The cold is kicking in. I know. That's just funny. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the sweeper. Everybody knows we have a sweeper we haven't used in a long time. I do have somebody that's constantly has a sweeper that is the same style, the American Lincoln, that's in a wassail. It would give us $2,500 for it, and he'll pick it up. Um, I recommend the council that we solid. Sweeper, I say. I recommend the council that we sell the sweeper for $2,500. And they'll pick it up. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, or, do, or does that have to be publicly posted? Or It's a certain amount. Does that, what's the amount? Scott was looking it up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm not opposed we, we, to it. I just no, want to go through it. No, but we, um, we've had it up there for quite a while. And we, Ryan was supposed to post it. All he needs to do is post it on RIP. Posted on some state uh, program where you can sell items. Yeah. Being it's a sweeper, it's not a pickup, it's not a. It, I mean, it's got a special identification to it, not like a lawnmower. Right. And I just at this point I was surprised that the guy said, "Hey, I can. He can take the parts off his that we have a hard time getting for ours, mm -hmm. and he can make it work." He has a multiple mobile home parts. Mm -hmm. Did you ever find what you paid for? It was like on the side. I didn't see that. I hope we got our money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we bought it from Perry. I brought it here. Oh. Ooh, last time I, used it. I, I, I was here, so I was like, it's been a while. It's been a while. I had it eight years. I draw it over so you can it. So it'd be like taking it to the scrap here, basically. Well, that's quite a bit of money to get the scrap, so. Yeah. These days. No kidding. So it's it's not it's a sweeper that goes down the road. It's not something you can drive. It's not uh, trying to identify the idea of what I was thinking. If you have somebody that will give you twenty five hundred bucks as is, and they'll pick it up. We did try to Brian was going to list it on the state of Michigan like website that lists. We're going to do our chipper too, the old chipper, mm -hmm. but. The people that Ryan's talked to kind of said about the tumbler being all out of shape, it's pretty much scrap. Mm -hmm. Just like sell the gas engine, and the rest of it. Why he's a lot of states' auctions they don't even tell you. You're trying to figure out if you can do that or not, Scott? Yeah. Just, you just right. Bid. So, want to split while he's working on that to go to Pro Tap? Sure. All right. So, Lana brought it to our attention that. You have to do it every year for somebody to be the vice president or pro temp. Why the president isn't in in place? Does any of the council have any recommendation? I recommend Lana Stanfield, president pro temp for one year. Do I have a second? Fails. Okay, do we have another motion? I will make a motion for Sam to be president pro tem. For who? Sam. Sam? Okay. We'll have a second. 
Am I allowed to second? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, we're on the pro tab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're meant to be a volunteer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Question goes to whether or not you can vote on this. Or well, if I can second the motion. It was a motion. Oh, it's, it's in the motion today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure out how to get. Yeah. Well, I don't want to put on an item pro temp one year. She mm -hmm. told us that every year we have to vote on that one. In the, in the motion on the floor is to. Sandra, Sandra motion to have me do it. Okay. The question is can I second that? Go back to the book. Well, then we should go back to my motion and she second herself. Sure. Just checking it out. This is that right. So technically there's a motion on the floor right now and settled first. But there's no second, so it it's failed. Because I well, the first one. Pause so we get an answer. Right. Thank you. So really there's nothing on the floor right now. We did it. A motion, not second. Another motion, not second. And then the time will find that third. Or you, you, we can cut this off and you can make a recommendation. I was thinking that. You can, but procedurally you can you can say second. Okay, so but we got to go backwards because then yeah, Monica did I didn't know I could. I didn't speak up because no, I thought that. Both motions failed. And it, and I knew both motions have failed, so we can start over again. But Deborah first said Lana, and Lana didn't know she was second. Yeah, I didn't think I could, mm -hmm. so I kept quiet. So isn't there anything in there that says that the, and I, I was just letting the council, but <laughs> did the president have to make the recommendation of the vice president or the program? Or could it be recommended by the council also? Actually, a good point. I feel like it might have to be a recommendation from the president. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think back. It says the council shall appoint one of their number president pro tem of the council, reporting to six, um, 65.3 of the General Law Village Act, of Act 3 of. 1895. Okay, so you're going to state statute, you're not inside our ordinance. Is that right? Um, it's the Michigan Compiled Laws. That's right here. Would you yeah, like to see MCL. it? Yeah. And what was it? 65. Here you go. Kind of the book that we were given. The general law village charter. So why is the first not working? <laughs> that was a question for you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> when did it stop working? Uh, when did the current stop working? <laughs> 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 when did the current stop working? Today? It was working yesterday. 
It froze. It's cold. <laughs> Is it downstairs too? No, luckily downstairs is working. <laughs> So we should have moved downstairs. Yes, this is what you're telling me. So it didn't cozy. Oh yeah, I didn't mind you. <laughs> I know. That's cold. <laughs> you knew it was a war. Seven two six three. Fix it, please. Now that we're getting I'm ready to end, that's just been a little bit. I swear, it fixes it. I know. It's like. <laughs> If the hammer doesn't fix it, it's not even light up. <laughs> oh, you really broke it now. Well, no, I just thought the thermostat, so I would reset the thermostat. Sometimes that, especially with those Aquabees, that's what happens is they kind of lose their mind. And then so you reset it, it'll come back? Yeah, it'll come back. 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 Yeah, it'll come Really cool. <laughs> so I can't imagine Thanks, people that Josh. are normally that light. The yeah. rest of us that are really cold yeah. are really, really cold. Like, I can't even <laughs> feel my toes in. My boots are tiny. And I have socks on too. Sandra, if you, if you get a hold of them where they can paint their minds, yeah. um, do you have it where you got Shane's number to give to them? Or I do. Collaborate? I do about Shane's number. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. The next week or the next couple of weeks, it looks like we might have a little window where they could stripe that. She went to her home Is everybody, if, if we can get somebody to do that, does everybody think that's a good idea? Yeah. To stripe that road, yeah. that little piece on Main Street. And I don't know how busy they are though, so I'll, I'll, I don't, I don't I'll let you I'll let you know what? as soon as I know. If Rusty were here, he would say do it in the spring. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not going to do it in a paint roller. I miss it. <laughs> He'd be all over this right now. Mm -hmm. They use the county and don't. I know, like when they did Williams, well, uh, Williams you imagine right on Dansville, yeah. they didn't paint those lines until the next spring. And I mean, that's a pretty major road. Well, we got new roads in this town. I Some people need to know where that's going. <laughs> they used to go by the bumps and the holes and right. how they got through the road. Like, where am I at? <laughs> I just drove down the mill anyway. <laughs> yep. The potholes were right on the sides. <laughs> Well, real quick before, because um, I'm trying to narrow down this answer, this, the, the way, although this announces um, the obligation of uh, appointing Mo, uh, Mayor Pro, uh, uh, President Pro Tem, um, it doesn't give any guidance as to the actual procedure involved, but it does say on November of each year, or as soon after that, at, I'm sorry, on November 20th of each year, or as soon after that date as possible. So, I can keep looking it up right now at this very second, or if you guys want to set this on to the next meeting, we can. Thank you. Was that? Yeah. Oh, I, I just don't, I feel bad, like I'm looking through this. No, you don't, you don't feel bad. So, the next meeting will be, or soon after, all right? Is everybody okay with that? I'm cool with it. Oh, all right, so then what about the not street sweeper? Okay. Well, when you throw, what, what do you think when I throw a bag? It's 25 bucks <laughs> because we didn't let the public know we're selling a sweeper because it's there. That money is going to be spent on, because we already spent it on our, our new truck that's doing an awesome job. So, uh, yeah, the uh, my only thought with that is it, it's kind of unique because, like you mentioned, it's not truly a vehicle, uh, but at the same time, if we know the amount of Twenty five hundred dollars is being offered for that. Yeah. The only alternative I can think of is that if we put it out to the public to put the public on notice, like, hey, this public uh, sweep street sweeper is going for twenty five hundred dollars. Is there anyone that is willing to pay more than that within so much time? Otherwise, the sale will be confirmed without any other interest. And it's true. And I, I tried to get Ryan to put it on the website to see if anybody would bite on it. Mm -hmm. The most he ever seen was thirty five hundred, the top four thousand, which was in better shape. Than ours, mm -hmm. so ours would be like ours needs parts, and the parts that it would need are the ones that this guy has. So, yeah. uh, a twenty-five hundred dollar, I, I guess at this point, it's it's taking up, it's leaking oil, and it's taking up space in our shop. We got a brand new truck. We want the the municipality, and the people knowing that our shut new truck that they left outside by a sweepers in shop trying to get it for sale. But if we leave that outside, then that'll go to Michael's down to Howell because that's what'll be left of it. Yeah. It'll be scrapped. 
Um, I think that's why um, part of the reason they do that is because it's obviously it was purchased with taxpayers' dollars. So then that's supposed to, you're supposed to get the most from an asset as possible for the taxpayers. Is how they always look at it. like other municipalities when I read their minutes, that's how they have to do it because they're, you know, they need to make sure it's fair, but you also want to be fair to the taxpayers to make sure you're getting the most amount of money. It doesn't sound like it really matters in this instance, but obviously you don't want to end up having a thing happen where someone from the even the village comes and says, Hey, I won't pay three. Yeah, I'm going to drive around town and sleep with it or drive yeah. back and forth to the bar with it. I mean, it doesn't seem like that would be a thing, but. I'm willing to take that chance. Yeah, I mean it's pretty amazing to me because I, I follow a lot of Michigan auctions, state auctions that they put stuff in. Like some of the stuff they put on there and how much money people bid that stuff up is like baffles my mind. Mm -hmm. Where it's like obviously you really wanted that and you did not want to let it go because <laughs> you know there was a Boss Plow um, just recently and it was for like a 2000 series truck, um, Chevy truck in. And I'm going for six grand, and I was like, "It's all rusty." Like, it made of gold. Yeah, it's like, but someone, someone wanted it that bad. So how many days we get the? What do you do? Put it on the site for? Anybody want to give us more money than twenty hundred dollars for the thing till next meeting? Why not? And that guy's gonna move uh, on, the point. and then you're still gonna have it. I'm fine with $2,500. I just want to make sure we're doing it the right way. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I'm okay with selling it. It's a great idea. Well, <laughs> you just got to know when to pull them. You know what I mean? I'm trying to I mean, as long guy. as we have somebody who's interested, because be in different three, three weeks' time, he might not be. You, you got to find the guy that wants a sweeper that's 1990. <laughs> That knows how to work on them to fix them to where they do it. And we bought it from Perry. We used it probably a half a dozen times, and after that, we never used it. It was it was a bad idea. It didn't work. Why don't you? Uh, here's just a random suggestion. Why don't you just put a seven day thing on it? Post it at the village on the window. You know that's very. Ryan was cool. supposed to do all that. Yeah, and for seven days, you know maybe if Scott needs to do more research, you know by then. But if by seven days doesn't no one comes in with an offer and then you did your dual diligence of trying to offer it up and if no one takes it then just can you hold them on for seven days let them know that we have to post it for seven days mm -hmm. yeah i mean it gets kind of in the middle so where do you where do you, where do you post that on facebook Sweeper. Just post it on, post on Facebook. Yeah, you post Facebook it. Just on the door. Just just right. here, on yeah. the door. Put a sign on the door yeah. by yeah. the library. Yeah. So even in the formal, uh, formal competitive bidding process, I mean, this is above and beyond. This is heavy duty buying, but it, the obligation is uh, notice is invited to seal competitive bids shall be published at least once in a newspaper journal of the village at least five days before final. Uh, submitting a bid, so even there's only five days of requirement, even in the formal competitive process. Um, so, I mean, do you, do you recall what it was purchased for originally? I mean, the price. I think the original price, in my opinion, I think it was fifty nine hundred. I don't think it was ninety five. It was five thousand nine hundred dollars. It was it was below six thousand bucks. Oh, okay. And it was eight years ago. Oh. And now the guy's willing to give us twenty five hundred. And the parts that don't work on it to use it now, you could drive it back and forth to the bar, but you're not going to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> and then it only goes what? It does twenty mile an hour, don't it? Okay. Uh, Fifteen twenty. Yeah. Did you know you were fast? You can't take much. You might live in it. I think I'm using it. It's a long trailer park. What the posted say though would it basically be a silent auction of? <clears throat> Starting bid is twenty five hundred bucks because you, you, you could post it for five grand and nobody would take it, but you could post it for twenty five, someone else yeah. might. Now you're snuffing this guy. So I don't know what the listing would look like. It's a good idea. I just don't have yeah. it. Starting bid twenty five. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Starting bid twenty five hundred dollars. Post it for the five days. Yeah, Post it on my bid for five days. No. That was what mine 
Well, I'm supposed to put it on the state of Michigan. I asked him at least three or four times and never got to it, correct? We did talk about it. That and the chipper. He tells me the chipper can't go on there because it won't work. So it sounds like it goes to Michael's, but it still should go on there, saying the drums better. Well, you, right? can, you can sell stuff that doesn't run on my bid. Yeah. Yeah, like, like that in my bid. Yeah, at halftime it says might not work or unknown condition. Mm -hmm. or unknown condition. Running condition. condition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so who's smart enough to put this sweeper on my bed at this point so it's on every five days? I mean, other than my tootsie roll fingers. Who's got it? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never you know, been on my bed, but it shouldn't be that difficult. So, I mean. Yeah, I was going to say, or I mean, a shame to yeah. give you the information, take off the pictures, I can just throw it on there. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'll figure out how to sign up for it, but she left the list of ideas and maxed out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Or the last thing we did, this is coming easy to us to ask all during the summer that we're not using it, so we yeah. should get rid of it. Now somebody wants to do it, pick up leaves with it, and the leaves will be protected for it. This will work, and it'll just sit there and rot and drip oil onto the concrete again for another year. Does anybody on Facebook say they want to buy it for 3500 bucks? No. <laughs> there isn't any comment on that. None. At least too warm. Yeah, they're warm. <laughs> they're sitting in their toasty house. Is, is that, that is, that's a diesel, isn't it? It's a diesel, too. It's got a giant right So what's the penalty if I say I just allow this? What do I do? Like a step in the hand or? <laughs> oh, can't wear cheesecake for you. Uh, yeah. I've heard, I've heard worse things that happen and nobody even wore a tether. A simple thing, you, you, we're not using it, it's a POS, and somebody else is going to put a parts on it, and they're going to use it, and voila, wrong time of the year, nobody's going to be sweeping, we're going to be plowing, uh -huh. <laughs> and it's taking up space. I already heard the phone over at the fire hall the other day. Oh, yeah? And I was like, my dog was getting upset. I'm like, what is he getting so upset about? Both me up out of the desk. I'm like, oh, they're filming. Let me try to have a presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not seeing anything on point that gets me to where I want to be on this. Um, we'll just post it and then yeah, go from there. Yeah. Or just do, like I said, just do the five day. Um, mm -hmm. front yep. door here, yeah. and then and I think if no one yeah, shows off, then he comes and grabs it. There we go, five days. Yep. Now we covered our fish. Yep. Take this and cross out person and then put that that's for sale. Five days, put it around the window. All right? Put on the window and then throw it off when it's just to, yep. so it's all the folks. I doubt I want to want it, but I don't want to wait five more days. Okay. So, no tap, we still don't know. Sweeper, we can't know. You could do a contingent on that. Contingent one. Contingent on a higher bid. You could vote to sell it. Contingent on a higher bid. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's a pretty good idea. Oh, I like it too. Yeah, then that would be a good one. 2,500 is one penny. <laughs> <laughs> Then that way he can have it in five days. Right. Go. And his yeah. 2500 would be considered the high bid. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. There you go. There you do have pictures. Somebody sent pictures, right? I got pictures. No, no, no. Huh? We need a vote on it? Yeah. Yep. All right. So we learned all that and got it all set up. So. The new Brown Act Men's Food Loss is only for the second. So five days we're going to post it. I recommend that we're going to post it for five days to see if they will they give us more than $2,500 for the street sweep. So in the event that that doesn't happen, they'll automatically go to the... I'd just say highest, highest bidder. Highest bidder. Yeah, sure. highest bidder. So yeah. moved. I okay, so we'll move on. Second Sam, second. Second. Sam, roll call. Shelby? Yes. Schumer? Yes. Sam Bill? Yes. Walton? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. Okay, we'll fix that. So we gonna just put it on the window, or we gonna yeah. try to put it on Facebook? It's up to you guys. As long as it's on the window, I'm yeah. thinking that would be good because okay. that's considered closed. Yeah. 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 All right, are we done? No, I I want to make I want to make a statement. The with Shane, he does take our phone home, so he will be able to use 
I know some people have questioned the pickup to go to and from his home and back to work. He will continue to be able to use that only to and from his home while he carries the phone and he has done that for us and he does take the calls. If there's 911 calls, he takes them. So in that event, we give a $2 raise to Ryan and we've already been doing the pickup with Shane. I just wanted to make it clear to the council that I'm allowing that to happen. So he has a vehicle to go back okay, home. Well, Shane goes on vacation or deer hunting, the vehicle stays in the village. If it works out, I don't see where that's been a problem. The statement is that, that pickup goes to and from his house for Shane. If he's gone for a period of time, he'll make a recommendation or he'll make accommodation of having to stay here. Okay. 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 So there's two trucks in the Yep. But most of the time, he would love to have a two vacation. Yeah. And when, when I got hired, I brought that up in the downstairs council chambers about that. And Rusty said that that was okay. the law all the work supervisors in the past to do that and that's oh okay. i get that accommodation you yep. know really that's a great accommodation yep. for you because look look at what happened during the tornado mm -hmm. and the well house and you had to get here yeah there is nothing thank no you for all the call today okay. i appreciate it we're just common. discussing like if you right. go off on no, your hunting have for vacation yeah and i always i always do ask him i said do you guys want a truck mm -hmm. and a lot of times I say no. I went, um, I went out of town two days last month. I guess or this earlier this month. And so when, I, when you get those calls, when does your time start? When the major gets in the truck. When, yeah, when I leave. Okay. He, you know that's never been an issue. Wait, and the the comment that somebody asked me, uh, rage phone conversation was I couldn't answer it but the truck stayed at his location why his wife took him to the airport and then she picked up the airport the village truck stayed at his home he didn't use that to go to the airport drop him off he used his own personal vehicle didn't charge his mileage so I couldn't answer it at the time I asked Shane when he got back I don't trust my wife driving that truck. John's <laughs> driving <laughs> 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 my truck. Yes, <laughs> okay, so I think if everybody's oh, all yeah, set. There's a yeah. comment. Yeah. We got one comment? Yeah, which said, uh, is, in the, is a metal awning a rough? No. Which that probably is a question for the press board. Or that would be kind of cool. I would say yes. Metal awning? Metal it's awning. permanent. It's like a car yeah, board. Yeah, it's like probably consider a car board is what they're probably referring to. Yeah, roof is, as Chris Corey mentioned, is defined by uh, building code or international property maintenance code, so whatever that says. Yeah. So I mean, about. Yeah, yeah I'm really. Hmm. That would be. Metal roof car board. It could be the metal awnings over the windows yeah it could be a pergola that has a metal or something like that there's a lot of definitions of that or comes off the side of the house or whatever that's what an awning is right so i mean that's the question so i'd probably just say you know i mean probably i would say look at the definition of growth in the ordinance yeah or just you know uh, talk to jim wright the ordinance officer Puts a carport on the line. You said. Thank you, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. All right. Both same side. We are done. Simple tires.